Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quarantine Devotionals. It's uh, it's Wednesday, March the 31st, the last day of March 2021. Can you believe it? We're, all, we're already in April, and tomorrow is April Fool's. If it had been this morning, I would have uh, I thought of something, but you have to hold off till tomorrow. But at least I'm giving you a fair warning so that you're not taken by surprise. Or maybe you're a prankster like me, and you enjoy a good prank. Uh, you can already be planning your day tomorrow and what you're going to do to people uh, to uh, uh, to throw them for a loop. Well, Wednesday, March the 31st, 2021. And can you believe it's been it's been uh, about a year, I think. I'll have to look it up, but it's been almost a year and we've been doing these quarantine devotionals. But I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close. Things are starting to open up and they're starting to look good. I can read about this this uh, another wave coming or something that they're talking about in the news. You know, honestly, I haven't been watching the news much, uh, just scanning headlines every morning just because it's, it's I, I think it really messes it up and it can be very discouraging. But uh, but I don't know, things are, things are looking like they might be starting to open up. And so we praise God for that. But it's good to be here this morning with you guys, Polly or Bonnie. Nice to see you. I think you're the winner for being the first one on this morning. Sherry, she beat you by, it looks just seconds. Um, so good to see both of you and Sandy and Barb Hyman, uh, always very faithful as well. And, and, uh, and the lakes too. Good morning. Good morning from the Ed Lake. It says, yes, the Ed Lake. There's only one of them and he's, a, and he's a good man and, uh, and Carolyn as well. So others will be joining us and, um, and, uh, I want to thank you guys for joining in this morning as we, uh, as we, uh, spend some time in God's word um let's uh let's go to god in prayer no better way to open the morning than by going to god in prayer let's pray lord god we want to thank you uh for the opportunity of gathering together like this lord even though it's gathering virtually um through the internet but uh it's wonderful to have this technology lord so that we're able to do this god as we come to you this morning we want to hear from your word and we ask that you would bless us lord so that we might be a blessing to you we don't ask for financial and material blessings we ask for the blessing of of uh, of knowing you better knowing your word better so that we can glorify jesus better so that we can go into the world and fulfill the, the task that you've given us lord and that is to make disciples um god we uh we want to thank you for a beautiful day and we pray that everything that we encounter today would just cause us to be thankful to you and to remember um, uh, what, 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 you, what you've made us born again for, Lord, a greater kingdom. As beautiful as this world is today, especially out here in the Pacific Northwest, um, there is a greater world yet to come. Help us to just always be mindful of that and also help others to be mindful of that as well. But turn our attention to your word now, Lord, and uh, and help us to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Yes. Woohoo, Polly. You you came in first. So, uh, <laughs> um, so guys, let's open up our Bibles. It, man, it is a gorgeous day. I'm looking out the window here, and the sun is already shining. And, uh, man, just beautiful out there. But, yes, let's open up uh, another beautiful thing, and that is the word that God's given us that he's put into Scripture for us. And we're going to open this morning to Luke chapter 10 once again. Last week we started on Luke chapter 10 and we're back in Luke chapter 10 again this morning. And as we turn there, um, what do I have for a recommendation this morning? Well, today I want to put the focus on kids materials once again. Every every month or two I, I bring something out. And this morning I want to... Um, I want to recommend this book right here. This is called the All About, it's the All About Jesus Bible Storybook. And this is one of the uh, kids Bibles that we use regularly here at our house. Every morning and evening we do devotions here and, uh, and we do it from two Bibles, so to speak. We do, we use the real Bible for one part of it and that's where our main focus is. But for a little guy like Abraham, sometimes it's not quite as understandable. So I always have a kid's Bible reading as well. And on top of it, even for somebody who's older like myself, I learn a lot from these Bibles. And the kids do too. The stories are succinct. The pictures are beautiful. 
Um, I'll show you some of the pictures here. This is all part of the Gospel Project uh, by Broadman and Holman. Um, but there's beautiful pictures, and the stories are about two pages. But what they do, what the authors of of uh, this Bible have done, the uh, it's all about Jesus Bible storybook, is that not only do they tell the Bible stories, but they center everything around Jesus. So every story shows how it points to Christ, and it weaves together the biblical storyline and the little motifs that that run all through scripture. is very thoughtful, put together by very keen theological minds to pick up on all of those things and make it all about Jesus, every uh, story. And uh, I see from just my kids' own lives, man, uh, they just know their Bible so well, uh, so much better than even most adult Christians do. And I attribute that to, to, uh, to these kinds of... Um, uh, really good children's resources. Uh, so yes, this, this is called, it's all about Jesus Bible storybook. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on uh, christianbook.com or any bookseller really. And I think that if you have grandchildren or you have children of your own, a book like this can be a huge benefit. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Check it out today. All right, well, Luke chapter 10, <clears throat> this is where we're at. This morning, we're going to focus on verses 17 through 20, but I want to read starting at verse 1 because it really kind of gives us the context for what we come across in uh, verses 17 and 20. So let's start at, at, uh, at verse 1 in Luke chapter 10. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others, and he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He told them, the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Now, go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Don't carry a money bag, traveling bag, or sandals. Don't greet anyone in the road. Whatever house you enter, say first say, peace to this household. If a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they offer, for the worker is worthy of his wages. Don't move from house to house. <clears throat> when you enter any town and they welcome you, eat the things set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near you. When you enter any town, and they don't welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we're wiping off even the dust of your town, uh, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet as a witness against you. Know this for certain, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more bearable for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, <clears throat> will you be exalted in heaven? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, the one who sent me. Now here's our verses for this morning. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. However, don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You know, in our day, in fact, I think not just in our day, pretty much in every age, uh, we find that we're motivated by what rewards us. You know, we see it all the time. In fact, if you're if you're involved in the church, let's say you're a church leader, you have some kind of ministry in the church, or if you're a pastor, you know how difficult it is to motivate people to get uh, them to do things or be involved in the things of the church. Even with my own kids, if I want them to do something, uh, oftentimes the question comes up in not so many words, what's in it for me? And we find that what motivates us 
uh, it has to, a lot to do with what kind of reward or immediate gratification that we can get out of it. Seldom are we motivated to do things or are people motivated to do things just because it's for the good of someone else or, uh, or just because we're able to be included at all. And this is one of the things that Jesus uh, tunes into when he hears these disciples coming back from going out. He sent them out. It says that in, verse, in chapter 10, verse 1. He sent them out to uh, preach the kingdom of God to people and to show people that the kingdom of God is has now come. But now they return and they are all excited. And Jesus, uh, he, 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 when, they, when they say, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name, Jesus quickly tunes in to the fact that what it, what might be motivating them might not be the right thing. And Jesus corrects them. And I think what we get from this text this morning and what Jesus wanted, wanted his disciples to get is that we should never forget that the greatest thing, the greatest thing is simply being known by God. The greatest thing isn't knowing what God can do for you. It's not even knowing what God can do through you. The greatest thing is just simply being known by God. And I think the first thing that we can come away with, uh, from with this text is that we, if we're going to rejoice, we need to rejoice in the excitement of actually being used by God. You and I rejoice in the excitement of actually being used by God. Now we see excitement here when we look at our text in verse 17. These disciples come back and they are excited. There is a newfound excitement that's within these disciples. You see, these are guys who uh, had been living for quite a while. They're probably in their 20s or 30s, maybe their 40s or 50s as well. And they've become used to the status quo, they, they, just like us. Um, you know, life goes on. There's things that happen day in and day out. Even during this time, part of the status quo was the fact that there were, uh, we mentioned it last time, there were teachers and there were uh, people going around talking about that the Messiah was going to come and things like this. They weren't referring to Jesus, but they were just talking about God was, he was going to come and deliver Israel from from, from the power of Rome, but even that had become the status quo. Now these disciples, as they go out, they're doing things that they never imagined. It looks now that the kingdom of God really is uh, coming around, or, or, or something really is happening. There's a movement, there's a stirring of God afoot, and they're finding for the first time that as Jesus sends them out, that God's spirit actually delivers ability to do God-sized things, the kind of things that they only read about happening three, four, five hundred years before. But now they're able to do this. And, you know, I, I want us to kind of tune into the excitement here that these disciples have, because this is, a, this is an excitement that new Christians have. Uh, you, you remember the first days of your faith? You remember when you were first saved and how exciting it was and, and the fact that now you were a part of God's kingdom. Now you could, you, you, you could see God doing things in your life. You know, <clears throat> we need to remember the first days of our faith and we need to let that kind of excitement, the excitement we see here, continue on in us. You know, we, uh, before we were saved, we were just used to the status quo. In fact, maybe... Maybe even now you've kind of become used to the status quo again. You've been saved for some period of time and you've kind of gone back to just living according to the status quo. But when you were first saved, it wasn't like that. You you were part of something. You became involved in the church. Uh, you became involved in Bible study and you were excited about what God might do through you. I remember those days. I remember that kind of excitement. Guys, we have to let that continue on. As our Christian years roll on, we begin to become complacent again. We become, we become used to the status quo. But I want to urge you this morning to look at the disciple, look at these the excitement of the disciples and remember what that was like and continue to be involved. Maybe you haven't been in a long time and you haven't seen the power of God working through you in a while, but continue to be involved and you will see God unfold things that are exciting in your life once again. You know, we have to we we have to uh, to live like that. We have to have this excitement. Do you still believe 
that God's Spirit can do through you the things that you hear about it. You you hear him doing through others. You know, we we see some of these guys out there, the Ray Comforts, side, uh, people like Kirk Cameron, um, uh, p- certain pastors out there who we see God really, really working through. And we know that God can work, but we, we don't really see him working through us. We need to really believe that God's Spirit can do through you the things that that we see him doing right here through these disciples. In order to see that, though, we have to step out. We have to move out of the status quo once again, and we need to blossom where God's planted us. Maybe we've missed opportunities. Maybe you felt years ago that God was calling you to the mission field, and you didn't obey. Well, you know what? God has still planted you where you are for a reason, and we need to step out. We need to blossom here. It's in It blossom in the church that you're a part of. You know, God has given you this church body and he's given you certain uh, spiritual gifts that are in you to bless others in the church. Step out and blossom in the church. Get involved in things in the church. Maybe you need to step out and blossom uh, in the communities he's placed you, in your work community. Maybe the, the neighbors around you or or the Little League, which we just signed up for here. And, and, and you know, I'm probably going to be coaching for um, in your family, at, at extended family events. Step out, blossom, speak about Jesus, talk about the kingdom of God. Or maybe it's just in overt evangelism. I know our church, we run these evangelism things. They're pretty overt uh, every single week. And, you know, it's nerve-wracking to get involved. But, you know, we have to look at these disciples, see the excitement, and realize that God can use us if we just step out and blossom where he's planted us. So rejoice again in that excitement of actually being used by God. And these disciples had that joy when they come back to Jesus. Now, here's another thing. When they do come back to Jesus, they they say this, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus says this strange thing to them. He doesn't say, well, that's really good. That's really good. Now, let's go do it again. He says this thing about Satan. Why watch Satan fall from heaven like lightning? And what Jesus is telling them, it might strike us as odd. Why in the world would Jesus say this? Why is he getting into some kind of ethereal theological talk here? But Jesus is noticing something in them that has to do with their motivation. And he is warning them, be careful of misguided excitement and be careful of the sneakiness of pride. And when God is at work in us, we need to be careful of misguided excitement and sneakiness of pride too. So why does Jesus suddenly reference Satan? Well, we have to remember that just like these uh, disciples were saying the demons submit to us, you know, Satan also had authority over demons as well. He also had authority. They were called angels uh, before, but now they're demons and Satan had authority over those angels. But even when he had authority and the power of God was in him to have authority over these things, he still fell. And so Jesus is warning these disciples not to find their greatest thrill in what Satan had his greatest thrill in, in power over over, uh, even angels or demons, or don't have your greatest thrill in having even power over evil, because Satan had that too, and he became misguided by thinking that he was great in himself. Satan was great. He still, in terms of power, he still is great. But as great as he was, he fell. And this is a warning that if Satan fell, you can fall too, disciples. Uh, So be careful here. And not only did Satan fall, but Satan, when he fell, he took a whole bunch of angels with him. And now we call them demons, right? What Jesus is telling his disciples here is that be careful because sin can grab hold of our tasting of the power of God. And sin can twist that taste. And it can lead us astray. Our sin can lead us astray. Remember, we have to remember always that we are still sinners. And don't ever forget that we're not good in and of ourselves. And in and of ourselves, we have no good power. Any power of God that we see in us comes only from being in Christ. Any power that we see going uh, of God that we see going out from us comes only from being in Christ. If we lose focus of that, the joy of being in Christ and seeing him work through us, then we can fall. You know, this happens sometimes. Um, Sometimes I stumble across these TV preachers and I hear them 
talk about, oh, the power that they have over this or over that. And it is so prideful. It just sounds so, so proud. Well, it is proud. And these are fallen men and women that are talking. That's why I don't believe that most of them are even Christians. So that can happen to us too. Sometimes when we do step out and we blossom, sometimes we will get involved in the church. Sometimes we'll get involved to the, in the church so much that we're elevated to a point of leadership in the church. And guys, we can become proud just like Satan was. And we can think that uh, we have this power or that this greatness is sometimes in us and we lose sight of the power of God. And it's then that we fall. Sometimes to the extent that we're taken out of ministry. Sometimes, if we don't repent, sometimes right out of the kingdom altogether. You know, <clears throat> this is something we need to be aware of. And we need to be careful of. Because it doesn't just affect us. It does affect us, but just like Satan, we may be the cause of others falling too. Remember that Satan didn't just fall himself. He took others with him as well. And if we... Uh, aren't careful and we see the power of God working through us in great ways others may see that as well and if our pride gets in and we fall we can take others with us too so we really need to be careful and Jesus is telling us to his disciples be careful of misguided excitement and the sneakiness of pride that can creep in so what ought to excite us I said at the start, we need to rejoice in the excitement of actually being used by God. Well, let your excitement be motivated simply by being part of God's kingdom. And that's what Jesus tells his disciples here. He says, verse 20, however, don't rejoice in that the, the spirits submit to you. That's great and everything, but don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Let your excitement be motivated just by being part of God's kingdom. You know, that's why Jesus' disciples are being used here, because they're part of the kingdom. They're not being used for any other reason other than the fact that they are in Christ, then they're part of the kingdom. But they're at risk of letting the blessing that God puts in their lives becoming the main thing. But the greatest thing that Jesus points them to is rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that you have eternal life. It's because you're in Christ that you're able to do any of this at all, he tells them. Well, that's what we need to rejoice in as well. Be excited because we're part of God's kingdom. Our being part of God's kingdom, that is the reason that we're being used at all. So rejoice in the benefits of, of the eternal life that you've received. And when we let that be our motivation, that God has even included us at all in his plan, we don't deserve to be included in his plan, but he's included us and he's allowed us to, to, uh, to do these things, to have these uh, gifts that he's given to us for the benefit of the saints, the benefit of his kingdom, and to see others come to know Jesus Christ. Boy, that is the greatest thing, to just be included in that at all, when all that we deserve is hell, but to be used by God for that Man, let your excitement be motivated by just being a part of God's kingdom. And never forget that the greatest thing isn't in the power over things that God might give us. The greatest thing is simply being known by God. It's not in knowing that what God can do, in knowing what God can do for us or through us. It's just in simply being known by God having eternal life with him and being a part of his kingdom. And that's what I think Jesus is pointing his disciples to here, be, be, becoming quickly aware that they could be led astray. You and I can be too. But guys, rejoice in the excitement of being used by God. Be careful when he does use you of misguided excitement and the sneakiness of pride. Let your excitement be motivated by being part of God's kingdom. It is great to be known by God. It's the greatest thing in all the world. And that, that is our reward, that we're known by him forever. Well, these are just a few of the things that I think we can glean from Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. And uh, once we know these things, now let's go out. Let's do what these disciples are doing. You and I are sent. It's exciting to be a part of God's kingdom. Go into the world and make disciples and be a blessing to God, be a blessing to others, and you also will be blessed. That's not our motivator so much that we'll be blessed, but that we can be a blessing to God. 
Well, guys, that's God's word for this morning. I hope that that's a blessing to you. If you have some more time, keep going. Keep keep reading God's word. Take take uh, take another fifteen minutes or so. Read a couple of chapters of God's word, and uh, and spend some time in prayer today. Um, anything coming up? Well, I just want to tell you we have prayer meeting tonight, so I'm going to post that on Facebook, and you, if you're in our church, you'll get an email about that. Join us for prayer meeting. We've had greater numbers than we've than we've ever had right now, so it's a blessing to see so many people out, and that's on Zoom. Friday, um, we're going to meet out at the corner of Highway 20 and Mill Road, and we're going to hold those signs up. If it's not raining, we're going to hold those signs up for hundreds and hundreds of cars to see the message of the gospel. So come out there and join us. That's at four thirty between 4 o'clock and 5.30 p.m. If you can't make it over the whole thing, that's no problem. Just come out for what you can. And, uh, and let's get out there at Mill Road and Highway 20 at, on Friday at 4 to 5.30. Also, we have uh, not just our church, but many churches are having the Good Friday service. So don't forget about the Good Friday service. At our church, it's at 6.30 p.m., but we're going to hear about what Jesus did on the cross. This is Holy Week, they call it. Um, and then Sunday, of course, we have Easter Sunday. And it's not just about Easter eggs and kids going out and gathering those things up. But it's about the day that our Savior rose again from the dead, overcame the power of sin and death, and began to lead us home to heaven. So those are some of the things going on. If your church has something going on, please post it so that we can know. Maybe, maybe it's something that others can take part in as well. Um, let's close in prayer. And then, uh, then we'll go about our day. Not according to the status quo, but according to the power of being used by God and being part of his kingdom. Let's pray. Lord God, we want to thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the way that you speak to us, for just how in tune you are with our natures, Lord. You know that pride is always there, always ready to attack and own us, Lord. And we pray that you would protect us from that. Let us be excited because we're part of your kingdom. Let us be excited to see others become a part of your kingdom and to be a blessing to you and a blessing to all of the nations, Lord, just as you promised. Uh, that your people would be. Help us to go now and to, uh, and to just bring you joy and to find our joy in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, have a great day, and we will see you Friday or Sunday, or if we don't see you then, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.